All right. The party recuperated from everything that just happened. Tentatively, they approached her corpse. <laughs> Before they get too close, Jules' body vanished as if melting away into the ground. We're going to have to fight her in the boss rush later. Yeah. Where, where did she go? What just happened? I'm not sure! I'd like to make a note of what you just said. I'd like just, just like us to write that down in the future. I think we're going to need it. I have never seen a demon disappear such as that upon death. But I admit... I've never seen a demon such as her before. Am I right, bros? Am Actually, I right? This whole conversation. We're just going to write down this whole conversation. You've never met a succubus? No, not not in a literal sense, anyway. Wow. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> so she's not dead. This couldn't get any better. Really. Oh, hell, we don't know that for sure. Wizard just said maybe her time just goes out that way. Pretty fancy, you ask me. Friend put her sword away with a loud clatter, getting everyone's attention. That's weird. <laughs> what did what? you clatter off of? Uh, the weird belt things. The weird yeah. belt things. No, no, you just write off the, the gauntlets. You, you don't. The bracers, I guess. Yeah, Those are you bracers. don't put your sword away off your wrist. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> You're not an Amazon. Fair. What matters is that she's no longer terrorizing the forest or the dark elves. Everyone thought about Tobear and its village, wondering if. The, they had recovered now that Jewel was gone. To the village. <laughs> this was the first to run from the forest. Loretta has returned! Have you done that? Was the demon dead? Before they could answer, Ashtray's soldiers were startled by movement among the dark elves. They started rising off the ground and snapping into their trances. They shook their heads as if they'd just woken from a groggy night of drinking, but were clearly back from their own minds again. Even Tobayar. Mesut was elated to see his father well. Ashtray offered the elder a hand up. After blinking a few times, he took them up on the offer. Our blood betrays us all. I have no words to describe how sorry I am. He swallowed and faced Ashtray. My friend. Do not waste words with such an apology. You are already forgiven. Now that this dreadful demon is slain, we can move forward toward ridding the world of the rest of them. One is still standing among us. Ray threw a cold look at Misfit, standing silently by his father. He didn't react to the accusation, as if he agreed. Loren eyed the younger Dark Elf. He just tried to murder them. But demon pact is taking control of you. I wonder if there's still any of yourself left in that shell. Tell them. Tell them that you're still my son. Whispert raised his chin up. His eyes were wrought with grief. Tell them. He continued to say nothing. He crouched down and held his head low. It was not a bow to plead for his life. He was making it easier for Lorette to kill him. No, stand up. Please tell them. Ashtray grabbed Tobar's shoulder tightly, but it was clear there would be no consolation strong enough for him after this. Lorraine was sympathetic, but logic her logic told her she was a, he was a danger and a demon. He was asking to be put out of that misery. She stepped up to him. Saren instinctively staggered forward. Could he let his mistress take Tobar's son's life? We are 100% not killing Misfit. He's the best character in our party. Yeah, no, we are not going to deny you the opportunity to do Beth Misfit's voice. There must be another way. He must be dealt with. Through death only? What other options do we have? But listen. Listen, Sarah. We literally I have, have had him tied up I for have like a month. Two swords. Both hands, swords. Nothing. It, 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 there are no other options. And you know, whenever you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Whenever you have a sword, everything looks like a head to cut off. Make a note of that. <laughs> nope, fuck you, bitch. I regret that choice of words. Anyway. I agreed. Yeah. We'll double his guard and monitor him not at all times. Who's gonna do guard duty with you? Ramus? <laughs> that was already done, if you'll recall. He broke free easily, injuring many guards. 
then there weren't then they weren't very good guards. I mean, I I wasn't a very. We are the most superior warriors. We'll be able to contain him. I feel like we've had this conversation. You have no chance to survive. Make your time. <laughs> Misfit will remain under our charge. We'll keep him safe from others and himself. A hint of a smile graced Tobiar. Thank you. Thank you for giving him, giving him a chance. Good still exists in the world, even when all is tainted by evil. The person who gives us that hope is more valuable than any resource. I can't see your face when I'm doing, I'm it's reading Ashtray's so long. It's so good. <laughs> oh. You chose well, sir. You chose well. <laughs> Princess Loren, you will make a fine leader. I've kept my word in dispatching the demon. The forest elders couldn't deny me my claims now. I think you're correct. It'll sit well with them. I will personally confer with them in your favor. As will I. It's funny, um, like that the Gilbert Godfrey thing on the break, like loosened up a bunch of my throat. <laughs> it's like it's, you, 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 good, 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 like twelve seconds of a Gilbert Godfrey impression will really just like clears a bunch of congestion. Yeah, just. Really removing the slam? No, that's terrible. No, no, no. Gotta, you gotta get, you gotta get that trill, right? Yeah. Uh, I can't even do I it. I can't like, find it, yeah. right? I can't say it without clitoris. There we go. It's really, it's rattling in the throat when you just, you gotta get down in the right? clitoris. It just, it just clears that shit yeah, right it's up. Down in the O. Orgasmic. Jesus. Ornithologist. There we go. Both jewel and cruel, oh my god, were now dealt with. Loren needed to return the Citadel to complete her takeover. You want to go to camp first, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, no immediate makeouts. All right. Uh, uh yeah, that ends this yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, so yeah. I don't think we have anything new. We may have a couple. You attacked us. Misfit inhaled deeply. I did. How could you? You were doing so well. I'm sorry. Literally I, mind control. I, yeah, I mean... Misfit blinked a few times and looked away. I'm sorry. Does she really have that much power over you? You were there. You've experienced her thrall. She's totally hot. Now imagine that she's coming from inside of you, constantly, for all time. I mean it. What did I say? Sarah was silent as he considered it. I don't know what the right choice is here. I that no, I feel I sympathize, sympathize. Let's yeah. go with sympathize with it. I had no idea. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, go yeah. there, sure. You understand. I'm beginning to, but that doesn't mean I will accept your bi- Fuck's my, sake! Violence is my nature. I know holy darkness. I could have possibly... Violence and basket weaving, really. I really just love a good basket. Alright, violence, basket weaving, and cheeseburgers. Fuck it. I could just murder a cheeseburger right now. Which brings us back to the vi- and this Violets, basket weaving, cheeseburgers. So what you're saying is your ideal date is a big, well-made basket of cheeseburgers which you can kill the fuck out of? God, kiss me, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, a basket of cheeseburgers sounds like a wonderful date. <clears throat> yeah. Right? Like, it's hard to go wrong with basket of cheeseburgers. However, if you need me for anything, you may speak with me. Need you? For what? I think the tone of my voice implied what I'm offering. I'm not really big on subtext. I, I also, I grew up in the desert. I'm not really big on text either. Uh, so, so to, to talk 
I'm here for you. What's that thing you do with your hands? <laughs> Misfit was baffled, but didn't refuse. <laughs> so, what exactly is going on between you and Loren? I'm her second in command. There's nothing informal going on. No, I mean really going on between you. We're not lovers. I'm not talking about your loins for once. I meant, how loyal are you to her? Most loyal. I serve her to the best of my ability. Would you kill me if she ordered you to? Romance. <laughs> Saren flushed and ran through several scenarios of reasons why Loren would order him to kill Kamara. But he was refusing to do it each time. A plus romance, dude! I can safely say that if my slave master ordered me to kill you, I would probably say no. I'd certainly have to think about it. I wouldn't enjoy it. <laughs> Not even if I was super secret, super evil spy. See? It fucking just nails the accent. <laughs> What if I was an assassin, only following you around so that I could kill Loren at the right moment? What if I bled you on, just so I could get you to trust me, so I could easily break Loren's defenses? Saren suddenly grabbed Kamara's arms. No, I know you. You wouldn't do any of that. You're touching me, you scorpion time now! <laughs> Everyone may dismiss you as evil at first glance, but I know you're not now. You're not an assassin or a spy. You want Foss to fall as much as the rest of us. Let us be clear. I'm not assassin or spy because I'm witch. Second off, evil is brand. Evil is my brand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's looking like a squirrel. Yes. <laughs> you wouldn't pretend to be interested in me. I like that the notion of that. Not because like he thinks that she has good intentions, but because she just doesn't have any time for bullshit. Kambara's eyes darted between his until she finally huffed. A little cookie, aren't you? Kambara pushed Saren away and stood apart. So what? I can stay close to someone, someone like you, and do nothing? What do you mean, someone like me? Abs for days. <laughs> no, I need to find someone like you. He's nothing but the. I wish nothing but the best. <laughs> Kambara's eyes flicked around his body so quickly he almost missed it. Literally abs for days. The Dark Witch charged away without answering. <laughs> nice! <clears throat> oh, man. All right. They won't care about us. Oh, wait, maybe. Yeah, no. no oh, no. That's, no, that's, that's, race, that's race throwaway. Yeah. Oh, thank you for Mishva! It just felt wrong. Kambara's eyes glistened. Which is what they do when you're most, not blinking, most of the time. blinking intensely. But she's a druid, right? She's a plant. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't mean like a spy. I mean that she's a literal plant. Yeah, like she is vegetation. Yes. Made flesh. Yeah. I'm just going to fucking leave that one. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it. Oh, you're shooting me. I can't judge someone simply by their flesh or booing. Ah, soon as I've neither. The garden of the soul is what's most important. So <laughs> You have a very vast garden, Saren. What, what, what I'm trying to say is I want you inside my bush. I don't, I don't actually, I, to be fair, I'm not confident I understand your physiology, Mirth. I'm willing to give it a go, but I'll probably need a diagram. Which was so good. Wouldn't that make Martha a hedge witch? <laughs> so good. I I do. Yeah, so the good num. I saw that real elf underneath. That tells me a lot of butcher. Something good. Something very good. <clears throat> Thank you again. Yeah. Oh, getting that level four. Karen, I am shamed. Because of Jewel, I could not shake her power from my mind. 
But my daughter could. Am I too old already? No, your majesty. You are of perfect age, and Loren has no feelings for other people. Also, she has a magic sword. Yeah. Karen perked up somewhat, but chose not to acknowledge the flattery, lest it went to her head. <clears throat> that is literally all that happened there. Yep. Oh, hi, Gan. Oh. Paula Michaud. Oh. Ooh! Ooh, oh. Ooh! Apollo Michaud was busy with alchemy in his tent. Saren had seen him mixing potions the entire time he'd been traveling with them, but he'd never offered one to anybody. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Here, take this! Why would I drink it? <laughs> why, why would I? You probably won't explode. Why are you even worrying about it? Well, I wasn't until you just, just drink it. You'll it's be... likely very good for you. Amukiki <laughs> drinks them by the grateful seriously the man's just drowning in gatorade <laughs> made from real alligators saren watched the old wizard silently as he poured a green liquid into a blue liquid and then took the resulting turquoise concoction and poured it over a shriveled brown, brown plant in a clay pot paul michaud stared at the dead plant so intently he didn't notice saren had crept up beside him after a moment the brown plant started to change colors it lifted off the soil and Raised to the sky, it turned green with life. You revived it. Only after killing it. Paul Michaud jumped to the start and glared at Saren. You are intruding in a space I've clearly stated was off limit. I've drawn a line down the middle of the cap. <laughs> Young man, you appear to be on my lawn. I'm sorry, but what were you? What you were doing was fascinating. Is that a potion to help us recover in battle? Yes, but it only works on mirth. <laughs> no, fool. It recovers a soul from the depths of the Underrealm. Wait, what? <laughs> that that would... Had a poem show found a cure for death? You will speak to no one of what you saw. Also, do plants have souls? How can I not? You created a potion of invincibility. That's not what this is. It, it, it was dead. Not invincibility. You were to never know about this potion. I do not have to explain everything to you, but you must promise me to tell in no one. Apollo Michaud, this is the most interesting thing you've done for two chapters. I'm sorry, but my first responsibility is to my princess and my queen. They need to know about this. Paula should have grown oh, some more. You are an unfair creature. If I must buy your silence, then I offer you a chance to help me work on the potion in question. Oh, that personal quest. Why would that change my mind? I'm giving you the chance to work aside, alongside the archwiz technically former archwizard, and a renowned alchemist. Apprentices compete for the honor on a regular basis. I'm not an apprentice. I'm a slave. No, thank you. Then I shall give you your own brew. There, is that what your types crave? <clears throat> Will this brew affect this, the, the, the proportions of my pen? I'm looking for something to make my pen is bigger. Sorry, um, my grammar is terrible. Saren paused as he was unfortunately tempted by the offer of a secret potion that could restore life. He could give the potion to Loren, the person who really needed invincibility. I disagree, man. I think it's you. But only if you keep your silence and you assist me. Very well. You must promise to keep your end of the deal. Pomacho eyed him instead of reassuring him. Prepare yourself for a dog's travel. Personal quest. That Q. So, so who have we done so far? We've done Dora. Dora, Ramus, Ramus uh, Karen. I think that's it. I think that's it, too. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. Alright, Draco. Hey, best friend. Saren looked over his shoulder. No, Draco was definitely talking to, to him. Oh, hi. Can I ask a fever? Everyone else seems to. Great, then I'll meet you in Horus. So, sorry, what, what, wait, what, uh? To do a fever for me. What am, I, what am I doing exactly? A favor. Nothing dangerous. I just need you to pretend you're my cousin. Saren went silent and stared. Just for a little while. 
Please tell me why. I need to get something from the <clears throat> Magic Academy there. The stupid heads kept all my stuff when they kicked me out. Sir so raised an eyebrow. I don't care about most of it. I just want my good luck charm back. We're going off to war, aren't we? Get the luck I can get. But why do I have to pretend to be your cousin? I can't go back to the Academy. Like I said, they're stupid heads. So someone has to get my stuff from me. A family member. I don't know. Please, I'll die without my lucky charm. That's the thing that I just said. Yep. You're you're so sure. I am. I'm dead meat. The charm's my only hope. If it matters that much to you, then... I'm now your cousin. Father's side. Alright, I got Draco's personal quest. Alright. The demon cast a charm on me. Jewel, yes, I, I know. She charmed literally everyone. Did she hurt you? No, she tried to seduce me. I am ashamed. <clears throat> Do not be. She was too strong to fight, except for the bit where we fought her and killed her. Uh, Rich, that's correct. We were saying that we we're after his lucky charms. Okay. Okay, that was, yep, that was a conversation. Hey, come here. Again? Is this about Dora? What? Hey, well, how'd you know? Uh, have you asked her if she likes you yet? Well, you keep saying that like it's so easy to do. You must think I'm some kind of goddamn dwarven god. Ain't my place to, uh... I'm uh, sorry, I didn't realize it was so difficult for you. Yeah, well, you got me. I need your help with her. I don't want her to know that I like her, but I can't just go out and say it. And I've been making it kind of obvious. And I had, uh, I had about, about five times with HR back in the camp and, and the Citadel. And, and, uh, and I, li li listen, I figured that... That awkwardly standing very close to her constantly was better than a conversation. I am trying to develop my psionic abilities, thank you. I am attempting to notify her of my affectionist desires through the medium of telepathy. Understood. What can I do for you? <laughs> I get sweaty and my voice stops working. And then she says something all pretty and like, and I'm like, well, God damn it. Also, she's literally the only other dwarf on basically the whole planet, except for Hammer Time. And I'm, well, I mean, we committed several atrocities in that city, and I probably ain't allowed back there. Uh, but in the meantime, I mean, certainly the only other dwarf in the party. I got her something, and I want you to get it to her for me. I must pull the large, bright sapphire from his pocket. It glimmered seductively in the light, and Sarah knew this was something that Dora would fall head over heels for. Is that your family gemstone? Yeah, I'm just saying I won't give Dora a piece of my family jewels. You finally got it out of your weapon. You bet I did. And I I, I want Dora to have it. Uh, she gonna pawn that shit, ain't she? She gonna pawn it in the first town we get to. She's just gonna sell it. 100% yes. Break my heart. 100%. Did I'm gonna have to fucking kill some motherfucker to get my goddamn family jewels We're back. We're doing that whole quest the second time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Could you just fucking talk to her? It's your family's crest. Are you sure you want to part with it? For Dora? Of course. Listen, man. Dwarves are inbred. I don't mean to... I'll just break it to you right now. Dating pool in, uh, in, uh... Hammer Time is like the gene pool. Shallow. All right. So, I mean, what I'm saying is when a mighty specimen of dwarven perfection like myself, check out these abs and these wonderful beard bows and the fact that I'm a literal fire hazard, encounters a young lady dwarf, he, uh, he needs to take steps. Yeah, I, the, the step I believe that we're looking for uh, is off. Could you, could you just step <laughs> off? Listen, li listen, son. I understand that lots of people like to go on dates and sit around picking flowers and, and fucking giving each other goddamn baskets of cheeseburgers. I'm a commitment kind of guy. I just fire wedding rings out of a crossbow until I hit the right person. So, let me get this straight. You would like me to effectively propose to a woman you've been unable to utter a sentence to? Yeah. 
This is the fucking plot of half a goddamn Seth Rogen movies. Well, it's as reasonable as anything else we've done in this game. <laughs> Mate and Richard, what the hell kind of person you think I am? It's just a gift that basically constitutes a fucking marriage proposal. If you say so. Yeah, I do. If it's too big a deal, I'll ask someone else to give it to her. Maybe that camera lady. She seems real nice. And you definitely won't give it to her yourself. <clears throat> We're going to have a serious fucking HR problem <laughs> in this party. Ramos gave him a long look instead of answering. Are you going to help me or not? Fuck. Make what? him do it his damn self. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious about what happens. But I agree. I'm sorry, but I don't feel comfortable doing this for you. Oh, ask a friend for a favor, and this is what I get. I mean, sure, the last time I d you did me a favor, we went and murdered like 12, 15, 200 people. But this time, suddenly, thought I was going to have to fucking get myself a cannon, fill it full of wedding ring grape shot so I can get married. Because <laughs> you don't help me. It doesn't mean I'm going to reconsider you. You're still not my type. Ramus don't like the D. Uh, that's fine, Ramus. Um, have you looked at any... I mean, unless by D you mean Dora, in which case, yes, but... Have you considered any of the other uh, women types in the camp? I understand they're not dwarves, but earlier this month I saw a lizard man and an elf woman had <laughs> made a baby. I I feel like the the racial divides are let's just strong. Let, let's just run through that, that, that list real quick. Uh, Canberra's a fucking scorpion. Right, like like ninety percent of the time is a scorpion. Fair. Alright. It's a penetrative shit. Uh Mirth, that druid, literally a plant. Legit plant. Uh I don't mean a spy, I mean a motherfucking plant. Aren't aren't you curious what's under the bush? No. Fair. It's fucking growing trees and shit. It's penetrative. Phallic. I don't like it. Alright, alright. Uh, Karen? All big on the spear, penetrative, move on. Exactly. Hell no. Loren, two swords. Two swords. You want to talk about phallic? Girl walks around with two swords. That's it. Suddenly I understand. We don't count Draco! <laughs> I assure you, I spent much time with him, and he is not interested in penetrating anything. Although, looking at your armor, it suddenly makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Fine, be that way. I can't believe I remembered all the women at our party. <laughs> like, our party's fucking huge. Alright, go on. <laughs> Someone clip that. Salzer, Salzer doesn't want to talk to us. Are we starting from this side? Uh, yeah. Yeah, remember. Yeah, we're going back the other way. We're hitting Loren. Uh, Saren, come here. It's time for me to cut off your head. Yes, ma'am? It's come to my attention that I will be inheriting my mother's throne much sooner than I anticipated. I believe you're ready, your highness. Do not patronize me. If I claim the throne at this moment, I will be the youngest queen in our history. I found my mother so that she would continue her reign, no? Lauren sighed and rubbed her temples. What I meant to ask you is for your help in this matter. My mother has requested that I perform the trial of queens as soon as possible. Personal quest. <clears throat> trial of queens? What is that? Try to keep up. You don't know. Good. I don't know either. It's reserved only for princesses who inherit their mother's thrones, rather than dethroning a queen in a duel. Given that you're kind of a fucking princess 90% of the time, I thought you might have heard of it. Harsh, but uh, <laughs> I'm nothing like a princess. I've never murdered a slave. Ooh. Amazon queens must earn the favor of their people through great feats. So a trial was invented to test our strength. There's a reliquary in the mountain under the citadel. I must fight my way through the caverns to prove my worthiness. How might I help you with this, if this is your trial? We're going to cheat. I'm allowed a servant. I choose you. That's right, Saren. You're not a slave anymore. You're <laughs> a Pokemon. <laughs> I'm still waiting for you to evolve into your next form. In fact, in fact, I would point out that I found you in the grass uh, just outside the citadel, 
You're not just a Pokemon. You're a Pidgey. Wait, I'm, I'm a grass type? That means I'm more compatible with Mirth than I thought. No, you idiot. Pidgeys aren't grass types. They're flying type. I never never played the game. God. We don't. Oh, God. Get out. We don't, we don't have access to Game Boys and the Slave Pens. <laughs> Get in the pot. I'm technically honored, Your Majesty. I don't know what to inspect in the underbelly of the Citadel, so don't <clears throat> consider it an honor yet. Also, get in the bowl. We should perform this task as soon as we make route to the Citadel. All right, so we have two more personal quests, which we should probably just do. Uh, yeah, uh, let's knock these out. We no, three. three! Yeah, right, Apollo must show... All right, let's... Apollo must show it up. Apollo must show me the money! ba da ba ba da This interface is terrible. Bad. Actually, that's better. Oh, why? This is if someone has a spear, they can't hit us both. Oh yeah. Fucking strategy. <laughs> Apollo Mitchell was quiet when Saren approached him at dawn. He scowled once before leading him from the camp and into the wilderness. The journey was more of the same: long stretches of walking with absolutely no words in between. It was great. They traveled to Mount Kronos. Saren was not looking forward to the climb or the cold. After some time, Saren dared to speak up as they approached the side of the cliff. Where are we going? Never mind! You are here to assist me, not to ask questions. Fucking grad students, right? I've, I've been quiet so far. The least you owe me is some explanation. No, I do not. Please, I've come this far. Paul Michaud grumbled. We're almost there. We will soon search the tomb of the fallen. Saren had heard of it. It was a massive tomb full of war heroes. They were buried with nothing but the clothes on their backs. What do you plan to find there? Pomachev said nothing and continued to hike. You're not looking for something, but someone. Pomachev stopped and turned around. He gave Saren a long look. We must be hastier. Before the old wizard could press on... Press on However, their way was blocked by unfriendly company. Orcs, great orcs. Let's Snow kill that orc healer. healer. Snow or oh, they're all critically weak to fire. Great, let's kill that healer. Um, yep, yep. that's gonna do that yep. job. There we go. Uh, four sixty two is weaker <sighs> and hasty. Oh yeah. Yeah, I yep, think yep, 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 no, just burn him down. Yeah, because there's no point in having him hit this guy, because they're just gonna be like, we're just gonna kill him. Yeah. Oh, he's done. Yay. Yay, a buckler. The orcs were slain. Apollo Michaud was warned from the climb in the battle. Are you well? I am. No more dallying. Dallying onwards. The old man did not stop to recover, <clears throat> even though Saren knew he needed to. They passed many obscure caves and burial sites in search of the mass tomb. At last, they made it. When they reached the door, Apollo Michaud braced himself to catch his breath. Have some of my water. Pomachev dismissed him. Saren was offended until he realized that his water canteen was frozen solid. There must have been something Saren could do to help Pomachev. Yeah, hand him the canteen and let the wizard melt the water. Yeah, seriously. Dude could probably cook garlic bread in his hands. Yeah. The tomb was larger than Saren ever imagined. It looked exactly like all the other tombs. Small utilitarian coffins lined the walls. There must be thousands of bodies here. Tens of thousands! Burials were rare in Aravorn, apart from the fact there were 10,000 people buried here. But the monks of the mountain had made an effort to preserve the bodies of fallen soldiers to honor them. It was almost in vain, as the way to visit the dead was too plagued by the very reason they were often burned. Skelemans. Beware. I have them. <laughs> Those were sentences we just uttered. Yeah. Uh, oh, they're weak to earth, which uh, he also yeah. um, deals with handily. 
Yep. Yep. That's basically the end of that fight. Uh, yep. Yep, we kill the Necromancer. And we win. Yay. The battle wore upon my showdown even further as he was forced to take a moment to recover. Saren watched him closely. Why are you pushing yourself so much? The dead here have not left. I also like, it's really interesting to me that... that they burn their dead specifically to prevent the skeletons. Mm. Like that's a that's a that's a bit of world building that I find really neat. At my age, everything is a race against time. Paul Michaud slowly started to search the names in each coffin. Your assistance is now required. I am looking for the name of Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. No, 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 not Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn with a fantasy spelling. Fuck. There's a thorn in it. Paul Michaud turned away. <laughs> The thorn. Saren was determined to finally be of use to Apollo Michaud and began his own search in a separate part of the tomb. Hours upon hours passed. Names began to blur together. Nope. That's, nope, that's no. not it. It's... There it is. Alright. Gwendy Lynn. Yep. That was really weird. Game mechanics. Saren almost passed up Gwendy Lynn's name when he finally found it, and then he couldn't believe it. Uh, sir? Sir? Pomachow had long spear be rushed and decided Saren's call. He hobbled forward, leaving heavily on his staff. Please tell me you have... Saren pointed at the tomb, and Apollo grasped its end with disbelief. A smile formed on his face, a rare sight for Saren because of the beard. Who is she? Pomachow probably pulled the coffin out with Saren's help and opened it. The dust cleared, a sleeping skeleton was before them. Hands crossed and... It's a sleeping skeleton? It is my daughter... Oh, yeah, this is going to go real bad. Oh, yeah. And it was reached into his robes and procured a bottle po a bottled potion. He opened it with a squeak. Saren recognized the turquoise color and immediately grabbed a hand before he could act. It's like, wait, are you sure that this is wise? Unhand me! She's dead. You know what can happen. Death Knights are hot! <laughs> We had to fight our way through the undead just to get here. Is that what you want her to be? I'm not making any fucking skeleton plants. Do not instruct me on my own life's work. You've done your job of reading. You may now leave the mountain. Sir, I won't allow you to do this. They both stood and glared at each other. Saren reached for the potion, but a palmisho pulled it away. Young man! In their struggle, the potion tipped into the casket. They froze as the liquid sprinkled across the skeleton. The bones started to rattle. The clothes on its body started to mend. As Apollo, as Apollo Michaud wanted, the body was animating, but no flesh covered its bones. Skele wow. Why did she get... Wow. Wow. She has interesting dress sense. Yeah, the skeleton sat up and picked itself out of the coffin. It just turns out that, like, his daughter was a super necromancer. When? The skeleton stood stoic for a moment and then faced Apollo Michaud. Stars. My daughter... Apollo Michaud smiled and opened his arms. The skeleton moved toward him, but not to return his embrace. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anybody surprised? All... Yeah, no. No one is surprised. Go Lich! Uh, yep. I yep. guess that's our that's our game. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ooh. no. Yeah, our next game is Heal Apollo Michaud every round. Uh, yeah. We go before he does, so... Alright, so we got... 100. Better, yeah. Um, 50? Yeah. No, we don't. We Level 2 is probably enough. He's only got... Yeah, that's way more than enough. He's only got 144. He's siphoning our life now. That's actually that's better weird. than him fighting a Palmer Joe. And now we can hit him! For, like, actual damage. Oh my god. You gotta kill the thing! Sir, it's good. Good god. No, he is still never taking a life! Gwen was destroyed, but so became a Palma show. He kneeled by the remains of his daughter and wept. Why? Why did you give your life when I was so willing? You had so much potential. He's got tears. tears. This is the most interesting thing that a Palma show has done in this whole game. Yup. Saren gave a Palma show the time he needed to truly make peace with his daughter's death. 
He spent so much time with the idea that she could come back, it was clear that he'd never allowed himself closure. He started to restore Gwendolyn to her coffin. Palmashe was still on the floor, refusing to let go of Gwen's embroidered cloak. Your mother gave this to her. It was the day she was admitted to the Magic Academy. So she literally was a necromancer. She insisted on fighting alongside me in the war. Her mother forbade it, but I took her anyway. To you. The day I came home without her. He squeezed the fabric. How did she die? Horribly. Well, she lost control of her own skeleton army and they turned on her. Yeah. Palma shows <laughs> slowly with much effort. Saren finished replacing the tomb. She sacrificed herself in my place. Sacrificed? Her bow was so strong, she knew what had to be done and she did it before I could stop her. I'm sorry, she sounds like a very remarkable woman. Silence filled the tomb once again. A Palma show turned away. We need to return. Palma show swallowed his sorrow and took belabored steps to make his way out of the tomb. When they reached the entrance, they felt the sting of the frigid air again. He visibly weakened. He leaned heavily on his staff and shook. Saren crouched in front of a Palma show. Allow me to carry you? I will piggyback you down this mountain. Nonsense. You don't need to pretend with me, Archwizard. Let me take but one of your burdens. Palmashow muttered and sighed, and then they piggybacked. He eventually caved in and allowed Saren to carry him on his back. The trek back to camp felt twice as long. When they were back, they both needed a long rest. To regain spell slots. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Before Palmashow retired, he caught Saren's ear. You were a decent help up on the mountain. Wow. <laughs> um, thanks. Palma, I I would grade you as possible. Are you negging me? <laughs> Saren smirked himself. I'm interested in knowing what it would take to garner higher praise. If a leg's journey on my back is only decent. Tris break down the tomb. Saren thought he would never see a poem show smile again. But he proved him wrong just then. Good night. Palma show disappeared into his tent. In time, Saren would learn that a poem show's alchemy had stopped and his findings scrapped. After seeing what his work had ultimately led, ultimately led to, he decided it was a dangerous slope and it needed to end with him. Apollo Michaud treasured the cloak he'd recovered from his daughter as a way of coming to terms with what had happened after so long. Cloak of the Fallen. Sweet, let's put it on somebody inappropriate. Oh, fuck. Oh. Oh. I went, I went into the camp to do the thing, and uh, yep, here that's, we are now. Yep. All right. This will probably be our last thing tonight. We're not going to have time for another personal quest. Yep. Since Saren had discovered the depth of his feelings for Mirth, he'd been tortured with them. He knew Mirth enjoyed his company, but and the way she looked at him was so different from anyone else, except for half of the fucking party. He needed no, to no, tell No, she Mirth. didn't look at anyone else that way. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, he needed to tell Mirth his feelings. He needed her period. I feel like that comma is <laughs> important. <laughs> he spent all his spare time trying to find the best romantic gesture he could think of. He discarded a basket full of cheeseburgers and his family jewels. Uh, he didn't want to give her just something in s small this time. She needed much more to light up th in this dark time. So he lit a forest on fire. His hunt for unrivaled beauty in the forest kept him occupied, but in the end it paid off dearly. He found something he never thought he would, but it was perfect. He had to show Mirth immediately and then confess to her how he felt. So this is funny. Like He hasn't confessed to anybody else. Right? Oh, yeah. Subtext all the way through. <laughs> And, like, Draco's, like, five-heart subtext. Yeah. Mirth smiled at him when he approached her in the special way that was just for him. What? It, it, it's from his perspective. There's something. It's in the forest. Oh! What's wrong? Is it wolves? No, 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 nothing's wrong. I just wanted to show you something I found. Would you come with me? So, I mean... That, like, the, this is interesting because the last time he, like, picked a flower and brought it to her and she was like, why would you harm this flower? Which we knew was going to happen. Yeah, that he's, and, he's and, learned. And, yeah, this is this is evidence that he can be taught. Oh, my God, is anything for you? Saren held out his hand to her and she looked down at it and bashfully reached out her own to grasp it. They stood for a moment just holding each other's hands, their cheeks turning rosy. Ah, oh, where is it? Oh, right, just this way. 
He led her into the forest and weaved through the trees to a special spot he discovered just for her. Before they arrived, he stopped and turned to her. Now, you must close your eyes. Oh, my dear, I can feel this entire forest! Really? Y- yes, really. She giggled and composed herself, placing her hand over her eyes. All right, well, I'll trust you. Lead on! Saren swallowed in anticipation. He tugged on her soft hand and walked backward in to keep an eye on her. Okay. He stopped and walked behind her to not obstruct her view. You can look now. Mirth pulled her hand from her face and was instantly struck. Her, dro- her jaw dropped. Okay, good. We got art for this. Sweet. Yeah. And that, that's, that's kind of pretty. Yeah. I'll give it that. Before her was a clearing filled with almost a hundred glowing flowers. Her favorite flower. Their combined luminescence saturated the air in a dreamy haze. It reflected on Mirth's skin and in her eyes, turning her, her into what could only be described as a goddess, especially because she's basically a literal, actual nature goddess. Yep. Yep. The sight of the flowers took her breath away. In all her days in the forest, she had never seen something like this, which is really weird because she is the forest. Uh, yep. Her mouth hung open as she took in the unbelievable image. Oh, it's like, it's like when you, like, get to see, like, in, like, a full-body mirror for the first time, you can, like, see your own back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, that's basically that's what's going on now. She's like, she knows it's there, like, she's felt it, mm. but... Saren walked up beside her to bask in her in- expression instead. Her smile made his chest bind up tightly as if he couldn't breathe either. How did she? I found them here. The wild brush must have kept the animals from eating them. And I really wanted to share it with you. Mirth turned to him with the sweetest smile he'd ever seen. She slid her arms around his neck and pressed into him with a melodic laugh. Get that level five, son. Oh, yeah. It's so beautiful, son, and I kind of believe it. So sensual. <laughs> he laughed too, wrapping his arms around her to squeeze her in return. He pressed her into him, and her laughter died down as she pulled back to look at him. Her faces were close as their eyes danced. They were still intertwined, and the thought of letting go of each other was the furthest thing from their minds. Yeah, this game is definitely written by straight people. Uh, yep. Hundred percent. Because because all the gay stuff is like subtext. Mirth's hand lifted, and her fingertips feathered Saren's cheek. I see the forest in your eyes. So romantic. Saren felt her words fall against his lips. He shivered with a well-known desire. I see the forest in your eyes. You got wood, son. You got wood. Evergreen and golden brown. Life and warmth. Home. Ooh. Her eyelids slowly lowered and the feel of her face grew hotter. Sarah could only hear the rapid beating of his own heart. His hand slid up her back over her shoulder into her jaw to bring her head toward him. He leaned down, she fell forwards and her lips parted. And he felt resistance. Her body locked up, but she was no longer moving towards him. He flashed open his eyes. He saw Mirth suddenly frowning. She completely broke away, taking several steps to part them. Saren couldn't even comprehend what was happening anymore. Ah, oh, do you two be back at camp now? I'm oh, already put an appointment. She whispered her excuse and walked away through the trees from him. She was in his arms just a moment ago. It felt so right. It felt perfect. What had happened? He learned about a whole new level of torture as he was forced to accept the reality of what had just happened. Damn! Ah! Ouch. Why, why, do you, why do you keep flirting with people that aren't Draco? Draco loves you for who you are. Right? Draco, Draco loves you, except almost, like, definitely in a gay way, but not in a way that you, the two of you do any gay stuff. Um, because the game wouldn't want that. Um, and he is literally the only person... Kambara. Kambara, yeah. Kambara is the other one I was thinking of. Kambara, Kambara loves you, um, not... Kambara does not love who you are. Kambara loves your abs. Yeah. <laughs> Kambara has a, what, would like a deep to... and intimate relationship with your torso. Well, I mean, your torso <laughs> would make the same kind of cricket noises on her scorpion body that it would on Ramesses. Mmm. Hot. <laughs> oh. Oh, goodness. Well, anyway, we're gonna let's a, equip that's a, that cloak. And yeah, then yeah, and that's wrap. about it. Is for, about that's all is, I got. I mean, I got nothing month, left. I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna do some stream, try and do some streaming from Scotland, but the timing's all gonna be weird and off. Um, because I'm gonna be five hours ahead. So, right, so we'll yeah, see. let's. Uh... Where the fuck? There we are. I assume that it's this boy, 
right? Cloth. Uh, try the armor. Nope. Oh, maybe it's uh, specific to him. Could be. Yeah, usable only by a Paul show. All right, well, put it on. Congratulations, you're now wearing your dead daughter's clothing. Yep, that's weird. Yep, super weird. Let's uh, acknowledge how weird that is. You know, I will give this game something. What's that? It has never crashed. Mm, true. All right. So, yeah, we're going to call it for the night. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, good night, Twitch. Oh. In a month, we're not going to remember where the hell is going on. Nope. Not a clue. We are hopefully getting close to the end of this game, though. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, there's. it's possible that we go to the Citadel... And, and that triggers. That's got to trigger the last. Yeah, that's the last like chapter where act. we go to the Everburn, right? Yeah, like there so can't finish... be anything left. Yeah, but how many personal quests have we got left? Like, uh, we, well, we have two right now. We, we have two ha left. Yeah, we don't have a personal quest for Amokiki. Yeah, so Amokiki. We don't have a personal quest for Mirth, Mirth or Ray, Ray or, or Kambara, Misfit or Kambara or Salzer. So that's five. Yeah, these three might not have one. Because they're from the DLC. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, Ray might ha not have one because he hates us? Yeah, no. Uh, Loren also hates us. Mm, point. Like, we have we're done like, nothing we're to... We're, like, super close to maxing out all the, all the hearts, though. Yep. I wonder what this game is like if you, if you romance Loren. Loren? Right? Like, because she just treats you like shit, like, 90% of the time. Yeah. Like... And I'm curious about how that changes if you romance her. But not curious enough to play this game. No. 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 Not even a little bit. No. All right. Good night. All right, Rich. Good night.